Hey guys, my name's Lenny from Jungle Scout. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about exactly how to sell private label products on Amazon. Firstly, why would you wanna sell on Amazon? Well, number one is their marketplace. They have millions of customers with credit cards ready to purchase. Number two is their distribution. You can actually send your products to Amazon. They will store it in their warehouses, then ship it out to customers, handle the returns, the customer service, all of the fulfillment. That means you've got a physical products business that you can manage completely remote. You don't need to fill your garage full of inventory and you've got a very scalable business. As an example, we launched these bamboo marshmallow sticks 19 months ago as part of a public case study. They were extremely successful, selling well over $50,000 worth of profit in the first 14 months. Today I'll share with you some of the best insights from that case study. So what am I gonna cover in this video? Number one, how to find a profitable product to sell, how to source a supplier to make your product, how to set up an account on Amazon and a listing, how to ship your product to Amazon, and then number five, how to optimize your listing and get more sales. So first you need to find a product to sell. Now product ideas can come from anywhere. They can come when you're over at your mate's house, when you're out doing shopping, the best thing to do is to create a long list of product ideas, let's say 50, and then you can narrow it down from there. The approach that we recommend is to find products that are already selling well and that we can verify, selling that same product, perhaps with a slight modification and then adding your logo and your brand to it. We don't recommend going after you know, products that you think might sell well or that you would just like to sell. You're starting a business, so you don't wanna make a big business decision based off of a hunch you wanna go off the numbers. Here at Jungle Scout, we offer a number of free and paid tools to assist with product research, but I'm gonna go through a few free strategies. What you're looking for is a product that has high demand or sales and low competition or reviews. To do that, let's start with your list of 50 product ideas. Now let's go to amazon.com. Let's do a search for your first product. We're going to analyze the top 10 listings under that keyword. So in terms of competition, Ideally, what we'd like to see is that eight out of the top 10 results have less than 100 reviews. It's okay if there's a couple of listings that have maybe 500 reviews, 1,000 is probably a little bit too much. We gauge competition by the number of reviews that a listing has because that's how customers make their purchasing decisions. Reviews take a while to accumulate, so if you're going up against listings that have thousands of reviews, it's going to take you a very long time and a lot of money in order to compete with those listings. To check the sales, open up the listing, go down to the product details section. Now you'll see that Amazon gives every single product in its catalog a rank. It's called a bestseller rank. This is called a parent category, and this one's called a subcategory. Copy the number from the parent category, paste it into our free sales estimator tool, and it will give you an estimate for the monthly sales of that listing. Now go ahead and do that for the top 10 listings under that product. Now there's a couple of things we're looking for here. As a combined total, we'd like to see at least 3,000 sales per month. Why? Because if you average that out, that's about 300 sales per listing, and if you can get 300 sales per month, that's about 10 sales per day which is a good number to shoot for. Anything less than that, the sales are starting to get pretty low and there's not much demand for that product. The other thing that we wanna check is the depth of the market. Now what I mean by that is how well those sales are spread out. If there's 3,000 sales combined, but the top two listings have you know, 2,500 of those sales, that means the sales aren't very well spread out. That means that unless you're in the top one or two position, you're not gonna get many sales at all. So what we wanna see is that the sales are fairly well distributed amongst that top 10. The next consideration in your product research is seasonality. You might look at Christmas tree lights in November and think, wow, this is an amazing opportunity. They sell 6,000 units per month. And it is a great opportunity. That is until January 1st, when there's no more sales. So you wanna identify if a product is seasonal and only sells at certain times of the year, or whether it sells all throughout the year, which is what we're after. A great tool to do this is Google Trends. Type in the product that you're wanting to look at and it will give you a nice little graph that shows you the search volume for that product. 
Now, it does show you the Google search traffic as opposed to the Amazon search traffic. So it's not 100% correct, but it will give you a really good idea. If you see consistent spikes every year, that means it probably is a seasonal item. A little bit of seasonality is okay, but you wanna verify that there is search data all throughout the year. Just quickly, if you're enjoying this video and finding it helpful, please give us a big thumbs up below. Really appreciate it. Now, I know I'm racing through this really fast. There's a lot to cover when it comes to selling on Amazon. And what I'm doing here is giving you the big overview. There are a lot more micro details, but we'll go through those in other videos. What you'll see in the description below is that I've given timestamps for everything I'm talking about, so you can come back and rewatch any section that you like. There's also gonna be links to more detailed videos that cover all the little micro details that I don't have time to cover in this video. Otherwise, it would go for hours. I hope you're still with me. Let's get back to it. So now we've analyzed the top 10 results of a product. We've looked at the competition levels and we've also looked at the sales for it. And it looks okay. The next step is to verify those sales, which means checking those numbers over time so that you can be confident that those sales are consistent. Again, you wouldn't want to make a big business decision and purchase a lot of product thinking that it's going to make a lot of sales when it might have just been one fluke day. So all that involves is doing that exact same process with the free estimator tool and doing it for a period of time. I'd recommend at least one or two weeks. Write down the estimates for each of those days and then see what the average is. See how much it changes. If it's showing 4,000 sales per month today, but then it evens out to about 2,000 for the next five days, then that's more likely to be the consistent sales that that product is getting. I just wanna quickly show you one of our paid tools. Now you don't need this tool, however it does make the process a lot faster. It's called the Product Tracker, which is part of our Jungle Scout web app. Let me show you an example. Let's say you are interested in the baby hooded towel niche, and let's say I wanna track the number of sales that this first product has got. I come over to the listing, I can copy the URL, come back to the web app, and now I can paste this URL into the product tracker and click add. So as I mentioned, you wanna track the sales over time and I showed you the process of finding the estimated sales, which you can come in and repeat every single day. Or you could use a tool like the product tracker that does it automatically for you. So let's open this one up here. Now, in addition to doing this automatically, the product tracker can actually go a step further than the sales estimates and it can actually get you real sales data. We do this by tracking the inventory levels, which are here in blue. So the difference in inventory is how many sales have happened for that particular day. So those are the big advantages of using the product tracker. You get real sales data and it does the whole process automatically for you. You can view your data anywhere between seven days or up to 60 days. So you'll see in this example here that we've got a lot of the black bars here which represent the real sales data. So because this product's been tracked for such a long time, we've got a lot of data there. We can be very confident in the average sales, which is 46 per day. There are lots of other advantages to using our web app, but that's just a glimpse. If you'd like to find out more, you can head to our website at junglescout.com to learn more about it. You see, the hardest thing about starting an Amazon business is well, starting an Amazon business. When it comes to a later stage, you've got an invoice from a supplier and you're ready to make that first payment, it can be really hard to actually, you know, pull the plug and do it. That is why this product research process is so important. The more you can verify the sales now, the easier it will be when you finally have to pull out your credit card and make that first payment. One more note on product research, it's hard. It wouldn't be product research if there wasn't some point where you're pulling out your hair, wanting to give up, or it's been hours and you're frustrated. We're not saying it's easy. It will take a lot of time, but this is the hardest part. If you can spend the time here and find a really solid product, it will make your life a whole lot easier down the track. Now you've got a product in mind, it's time to find a supplier. There are a few places you can go, such as alibaba.com, aliexpress.com, and globalsources.com. Alibaba is by far the biggest marketplace. Here you can type in the product that you're looking for. I'd recommend searching by manufacturers because often they'll list several of the same item. Tick the gold supply box, 
This narrows down your results to what's usually a better list. So you want to contact 10 to 15 different suppliers. You can use the template that we've got down here below. Go into the description to get a link to download that one yourself. Now you want to ask them different questions like, do you offer a sample? How much is it for a sample to this postcode or to the US? How much is it for 500 pieces? How much is it for 1000 pieces? Can I make a first order of only 200 pieces? And how much for that? And then if there's anything specific you want changed with that product, can you make this product to this specification? Can you make it this size or out of this material? You wanna ask all these questions together when you first reach out to a supplier so that you're not going backwards and forwards via email. Now evaluate their replies. Did they have good English or communication? Did they answer all of your questions or did they just give you a generic answer? Write down all the prices they've given you. Some things to note. Suppliers will often ask to continue the conversation on Skype or email. This is totally normal. Expect to pay anywhere from $50 to $100 US for a sample. I know this sounds like a lot, but it's just the cost of doing business. Now you wanna to aim to get at least two to three samples from different suppliers. This way you can compare the quality and see which one you like best. The sooner you get these samples, the sooner you can move forward. When you're happy with the sample on the supplier, go ahead and tell them that you'd like to place your first order. Now you can negotiate your payment terms. Often you can negotiate paying 30% upfront and then 70% before they ship the product. Or sometimes it might be 50 upfront and 50 after. In terms of payment methods, PayPal is fine for samples. For larger orders, it's going to incur a 5% fee, so you want to stay away from PayPal. TT is common, which is basically a bank transfer. You can also pay via Alibaba, and some suppliers will even include something called trade assurance, which is really nice to get, because that ensures your shipment in case anything goes wrong. Try to go for this option if you can. We recommend staying away from Western Union though, because there's no real means of recourse if anything goes wrong. Production will typically take anywhere from two to six weeks. However, there's a number of things that you can be doing simultaneously during this period. Firstly, setting up an Amazon account. You have two options. You've got a professional account, which is $39.99 a month, or you have an individual account that doesn't have a monthly fee, but you pay $1 per sale. So if you're serious about building a business on Amazon, you're much better off going with the professional seller account as it works out a lot cheaper once your sales start to get up there and you've got access to a lot more additional tools. So click start selling, then follow the prompts to finish setting up your account. Once you've set up your seller central account, come up to catalog, add products in order to create your first listing. Scroll down a bit, you'll see list a new product, and you'll notice that Amazon wants you to search for your product name. If you type it in here, it will find existing listings. Now this isn't what you wanna do. This is more for wholesaling or retail arbitrage, where you wanna sell somebody else's product. But what we're talking about here is the private label model, where you sell your own branded product. So you wanna come down to create a new product listing. Head down and find the most relevant category for your product. Hit select. Now you'll be asked to fill out basic information about your product. So here you can put in the product name. The manufacturer name is your brand name. That can be the same as your brand name or it can be different, but this is totally up to you. You can also create the manufacturer part number Remember, you're getting this product manufactured in China, and so you can actually decide what the part number is, as well as the, the name of the manufacturer. This specific product has a package quantity and a unit count. Not all products will have this. These are just specifications that are specific to this product. One tip on creating your brand name. What I'd suggest is creating a brand name that's fairly universal. Lenny's Party Supplies is a very specific niche and only really relevant to party supplies. Whereas just Lenny's products is a much broader name that you could sell a lot of different products underneath. The advantage of this is that you can look at profitable products from many different markets and you can sell them all under the same brand name. Finally, you'll be asked to enter a product ID, a unique identifier for this product, 
which is a UPC code. This is a barcode that is unique to every single product. Now the official place to purchase UPC barcodes is called GS1. They do tend to be a little more expensive, however they are the preferred place of purchase from Amazon. However there may be a way that you can actually use another third party company that sells UPC codes at a much cheaper rate. However, this can get a little bit complicated and it has been changing quite a bit lately. So I'm gonna to link to a video in the description below that explains this in more detail. Once you've completed this data, the only other thing that you have to do right now is set your price and then you can come down to save and finish. Your listing will be created. Once your listing has been created, come over to inventory, manage inventory, and you'll see your listing displayed below. Shortly after it's been created, you'll be able to come over to this menu here and click print item labels. Click print again. Now this gives you what is called the FN SKU barcode. This is the one that Amazon requires you to have on your product packaging. You don't need the UPC barcode that we talked about before. This is the only barcode you need on your product packaging. Now that you've got the FN SKU barcode, send that to your supplier. They can either stick that onto your packaging or they can print it directly onto the packaging, which is what we recommend. Now in terms of the packaging, we recommend getting it customized. This sets your product further apart from the competition. The sooner you can get this done, the better, because it will take a couple of weeks for them to produce it. So ask your supplier for the different packaging options that come with your product. Select the one that you like the most and then ask them for a template. Now you'd wanna receive a file type such as .ai or .eps. To get your design made, you could go somewhere like Fiverr or 99designs. You could also use these websites to get your logo done as well. One little tip here, don't get too hung up on your logo, just get it done. Just quickly, these are the most important things to have on your packaging. Your brand name, the product name, a photo of the product, where it was made, such as made in China, and then just make sure that there's nothing else that you're legally required to put on there based on the type of product that it is. When you have the final design, send it through to your supplier. They might ask you to purchase a large quantity up front, such as 3,000 or 5,000 pieces. This is fine as it brings the price down and they'll just hold on to those extra ones until you make later orders. Product photography is another thing you can do while you wait. You could seek out a local photographer or there are lots of online photographers that specialize in product photography. Keep in mind your main image needs to be against a white backdrop, take up at least 85% of the image, and have no extra props or text or logos on that photo. For your other images, try showing some different angles of your product, show it being used by different people, maybe also include a photo of it with its packaging, which you can do at a later date when you do have the packaging. You can upload up to nine images on your listing, so you wanna use them all up but at the beginning, at least get four or five there to start with. Write a detailed title, bullet points, and description. Take your time here because this is what is gonna sell your product. Also include your main keywords wherever you can because this will help your listing rank. As production comes to an end, you'll also need to create a shipment in Amazon. Now I'm in Amazon Seller Central and I'm just setting up a new shipping plan. So firstly, you can choose to either create a new plan or add an existing plan. Adding to an existing shipping plan means maybe you've got two products. You wanna send them both in at the same time. When it comes to sending in the second product, you just click add to an existing shipping plan and it gives you the ability to choose the shipping plan that you've already set up. Otherwise, just create a new shipping plan. The ship from address here is where you put in your supplier's address. So just ask your supplier for what their address is or it should have it on the invoice or on their website. Now, if you're just sending in the one type of product, you want a case packed product. I'll show you the little demonstration over here. Individual products is if you know, you're sending in a whole heap of different SKUs and all in one box. Otherwise, if it's just the, the one product and you're sending in everything the same, then go with case packed products. Continue. On this page, you now need to enter the quantity of units that you're gonna be sending. If you don't know how many units are sent per case or per carton, ask your supplier. Now this doesn't have to be the exact number of units per case and number of cases, as you can create the box configurations later on. The most important thing is that the total number of units is correct. 
you can modify this later, but it only allows you to change it by a few units less or more. Amazon wants you to confirm that you're aware of any storage fees. Now for some products, you might have to give more information if it's in a restricted category or something like that. But for the most part, you shouldn't need to take any further action. Click continue. Again, in most cases, you should be able to click continue. Now here you get to choose whether you're going to apply the FN SKU barcodes or whether Amazon is going to do it. Notice if I select Amazon, it shows me that it's gonna cost 20 cents per unit. So usually you can get your supplier to do this. So I would just make that merchant. If you haven't got the labels already, you've got the option to download them here. However, you can do that straight from your inventory screen as well. Click continue. Now you can give a name to your shipment over here. And if you can confirm that all these details are correct, hit approve shipment. Come over to work on shipment. You do have to create a shipping plan in order to see where Amazon is going to send the product. So in order to be able to tell your supplier or freight forwarder exactly where to ship your products, you do need to create this shipping plan first. Now copy the address that Amazon gives you and send that to your freight forwarder or supplier. Okay, now you can review your shipment contents. Select your shipping method, and then you can select your carrier if it is here, or just hit other. Just select whether it's everything in one box or multiple boxes. Usually it would be multiple boxes. Now you can set up multiple box configurations. So if you've got different box sizes, you can set that up here. Make sure that your total adds up to the correct amount, and then you can confirm that one. If you've changed the number of boxes that you've got here, do make sure you print your box labels again. This will give you the PDF, which you can send to your supplier or freight forwarder. Once you've done that, hit complete shipment and you'll be done. Now you can ask your supplier to send you photos of the shipment and the product. If you're worried about the quality, you can hire a third party inspection company to check your products before they leave the factory. It's a much better idea to do that now than when it reaches the US, because by that point, there's not much that can be done. One company you can use is called asiainspections.com. For shipping, you can get your supplier to organize this, or you can contact a freight forwarder and organize this yourself. Some people send their shipments to their house first in the US in order to inspect them, and then use a re-shipping service that Amazon offers to get at that final distance to their warehouses. You don't have to do this though, and you can just send direct to Amazon. Freightos is a website you can use to collect lots of different freight forwarder quotes, and Flexport is a freight forwarder that is very popular and will help you every step along the way, making sure everything's done correctly. Now that you've got a listing set up and your shipment has arrived at Amazon, you're ready to make sales. When you first start out, there are two things you need, sales and reviews. This is gonna give you the momentum you need to get ranked on the most popular search terms get found by customers and ultimately make sales. The way customers find products on Amazon is by typing into the search bar the product that they're looking for, selecting a listing that they like, and then purchasing from there. So your goal is to make sure that your listing appears when they type in the name of your product. So if you were selling this product, for instance, the baby hooded towel, you would probably want to be ranked under the keyword baby hooded towel. So when a customer types this search term into Amazon, they see your listing up here in the top results. Some of the other keywords you might want to rank for might be hooded baby towel, even hooded baby towels for boys, girl, set. So you see by ranking or appearing on these search term pages is how customers discover you and how you get sales. A brand new listing like yours is probably going to be on page 20 or 50 and never get seen by the customers. The only way to start climbing the ranks and eventually appear on page one, which is where most of the sales happen, is by getting sales. So that's why sales is one of the most important things to get at the start. Once you've got that visibility, how do you then make customers purchase your listing and not someone else's? This is where reviews come in. Customers purchase from listings that have high numbers of reviews that they trust. So that's why it's really important for you to get sales and reviews when you first start out. Let's talk about sales. When you first launch your product, it's a really good strategy to offer what's called a giveaway promotion. 
This is where you offer 50% or more off of a number of your units just to get those sales happening at the start. You can host this on deal websites where customers come to get discounted products. The one that we recommend is called JumpSend. Using the baby hooded towels as an example, you'll see that a lot of these listings are priced between $15 to $20. So if we come across to JumpSend, if you look at baby hooded towels, you'll see that people are offering quite steep discounts, anywhere from 50% off all the way up to even 90% off for these same products. So by offering this steep discount, you almost guarantee that you're going to get a lot of sales, certainly a lot more than just leaving your product at full price. This does mean you're likely going to lose money on these sales at the beginning, but it's important that you have this budget in place because as I mentioned, you do need these initial sales in order to get your listing launched and rank for some keywords so that you can begin to get natural organic sales. Using JumpSend allows you to control how many coupon codes you give out per day. So just as a bit of a guideline, a good strategy might be giving away anywhere between 50 to 80% off for your product, depending on what it is, and then give away somewhere between five to 10 products per day, anywhere between one to maybe two weeks. Let me show you how to set it up. So we're over in Seller Central right now. If you haven't set up a promotion before, you'll need to come over to Manage Product Selection. From here, come to Create Product Selection. This is where you decide what products you want to be affected by that promotion. Over here, you can select ASIN list and create product selection. For the product selection name, put in whatever you want. This is just for your internal use only. Now you want to paste in the ASIN or ASINs that you want to be affected by your promotion. Once you've done that, hit submit and you've now successfully created the product selection. You can now come to create a promotion percentage off. Okay, so buyer purchases, by default, it's at least this quantity of items. That's the one that we normally recommend. You can also choose at least amount in dollars or for every quantity of items purchased. So this determines how the promotion is triggered. So we'll leave it at this for this example. Purchased items, you click here and it shows you all your product selections. This is where you select the product selection you've just created buyer gets percentage off. So now's where you set the discount amount that your customers will receive off your product. So let's say 30% for this example, applies to purchased items, or you can choose qualifying item, but we prefer purchased. Now step two, scheduling. So keep in mind that an Amazon promotion needs to start at least four hours into the future. It will not be active before that. Now setting your end date is very important. Before you do this, come across to JumpSend. This is the time that you have set on JumpSend that you would like the promotion to end. It's really important that you use this date and time when you're setting the end date and time over on Amazon. The reason for this is back on JumpSend in step two, and it's related to inventory protection. By default, customers can purchase any quantity of your items. In order to combat that, we've put in place a limit order quantity. So this means that the customer can only purchase up to the number that you set. However, this limit only applies until the end date stated here on JumpSend. That's why it's really important to make sure that your promotion ends at the same time or even before the end date on JumpSend. Okay, so next is internal description. Again, just put in something for your own internal use. On to step three. So we highly recommend single use. You also see that by default that checks one redemption per customer. So this combination means that this customer can only use this particular code once. So after this step, you've got claim code combinability. We prefer exclusive. What that means is that this code cannot be used in conjunction with any other codes. I'll show you customized messaging. We wanna make sure that detail page display text is unchecked, which it is by default, but I just wanna show you just in case Amazon changes this in the future. 
You want this to be unchecked because otherwise your promotion will be public on your listing for anyone to see and anyone to use that promotion. So we definitely want that unchecked. Once you've finished, come down to review. It's important to check over all of your details here. Once you've done that, hit submit. Your promotion has now been successfully created. The next step is to create the coupon codes. So go to view or modify your promotion and then manage claim codes. Again, the name can be whatever you want it to be. You set the number of codes that you would like. In this case, we'll make it 20 and hit create. You'll see it shows in progress here, but normally it only takes a couple of minutes or less. If I refresh now, you'll see that they're ready to download. So if we download those, it will create a zip file. If you open the zip file, you'll get a text document which has all of the codes. From here, you just simply copy all of them, come back to jump send, paste them in, and you're ready to go. Please do keep in mind though, that the promotion will not start for four hours. So if you approve any customers before that time, the code will not work for them. So please keep that in mind. Otherwise, hit next and you're all set to go. Amazon also have an advertising platform called PPC or pay-per-click, where your listing can be displayed above all the others. It's really easy to set up. All you do is select the keywords that you'd like to be displayed under and how much you're willing to pay in order to be shown under that keyword. When you're first starting out and your listing is appearing on page 20, you can actually pay to get your listing shown on page one and get that exposure in front of all the customers. When you start out, there are two types of campaigns that I'd recommend setting up. The first is an automatic campaign. So firstly, from Seller Central, go to Advertising Campaign Manager, and then down to Create Campaign. Give your campaign a name and your daily budget of how much you'd like to spend. So for this example, let's say we just wanna spend $20 a day starting from today, and here's where you choose automatic or manual. So start with automatic and click continue. Now you can select the product, give it a name, and then come down and select a default bid. So that might be $1. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to pay $1 every time someone clicks on your ad. That just means that's the maximum amount you're willing to pay. So if the previous person only bids 30 cents, then your bid might be 31 cents. So $1 is a fairly high bid. If you're starting out and you wanna be a bit more conservative, maybe make it about 50 cents or 70 cents. But after a few days, if you're not getting many impressions or views, then the reason might be because your default bid is too low and other people are bidding higher than you and therefore your ad isn't showing. So if this is the case, after a few days, I'd recommend upping your bid a little bit more. But to keep it simple, make your default bid somewhere between 50 cents to a dollar, click save and finish, and your campaign will start to run. Automatic campaigns are really great to set up at the start for a number of reasons. One is that they're really easy to set up and don't take much time. Number two is that they begin to collect data for you. At the start, you don't know what keywords people are clicking on in order to find your listing. With an automatic campaign, Amazon will display your listing on the keywords that it believes is most relevant. After running this campaign for at least a week, you can actually download a report that shows all the keywords that Amazon has been displaying you for. You can take that information, select the best performing keywords, and then put them into your own manual campaign where you have a little bit more control over how much you spend on each one. We have more in-depth webinars and tutorials on PPC, but just setting up an automatic campaign is the easiest step to take when you first start out. The other important thing to do is to set up automated email campaigns. This sends follow-up emails to all the customers that purchase from you on Amazon. This provides great customer service and it also encourages customers to leave reviews as well. So it increases the likelihood that you're going to get reviews from all the sales that you get. While not all of your customers are going to leave you a review, a certain number will. And by having automated email campaigns, it'll certainly increase the likelihood of this happening. Our app JumpSend that I recommended earlier to help you set up promotional giveaways can also be used to set up email campaigns. I'm inside JumpSend right now, so I'll show you how to set one up. So first, just come over here to add new email campaign. 
You have a number of different template options here, ranging from a blank template, which you do completely yourself. Or you've got three of our pre-made templates. You'll see over here, there's a number of messages. So that's how many emails will be sent out in each one. For this example, let's click on two review requests. When you have your products synced correctly, you'll see all of your products listed up here. In this example, they're not connected, but we can show you how to do that in another video. So up here, you can name your campaign. Now let's take a look at the messages. So if you come down here, you'll see that we are in the first message. You can edit each individual message or email by clicking between these tabs. You can change the name of each email or message. By default, each message will be paused. When we've finished editing the message, we can activate it, but for now, we'll leave it paused. So if we come down here, we'll see this email template is already all set up and good to go. One of the coolest things about these email templates are autofill tags. So autofill tags will essentially download this information from your Amazon order. So in this case, it will grab the buyer's first name and automatically insert that there. The same here with the product name and then also with the order link for that particular customer. So that means you don't need to do anything to this email and it's ready to go, except come down here and change your name. You're welcome to edit this email, however you don't need to. So up here, you've got your basic formatting settings, bold, italic, size, font, justification. If you wanna add any additional autofill tags or if you're editing a blank email, this is where you do it. So these are all the options you have for autofill tags. If you wanna add an attachment to the email, such as a PDF or perhaps an ebook, you can do that right down here. And that will send out every time this particular email sends out. If you'd like to send a test to see how the email will look, you can click on the send test here and that will send a test email to yourself. You can also come down here and click preview and this will also give you an idea of what the customer will see when they receive the email. So up the top here, you can set the timing of when the email goes out as well as the conditions of when you want it to go out. So essentially, here are the different options. If you want it to go out one day, two day, three days, all the way up to 15 days or more. And down here, you can decide whether you want the email to go out after the order has been confirmed, has been shipped or delivered. Of course, you've got the subject here that you can change as well. So then when you're happy with your email, come down here, save the changes, turn this email on, go through into the next emails and rinse and repeat. Now here's an example of what you'll see when your Amazon account is correctly synced with JumpSend. You'll see all of your products listed up here and you can toggle on and off the ones that you wanna be sending this particular campaign for. Once you've selected it, just come down and click save product selection. Now back to the email campaigns page, you'll see a summary of all your campaigns You'll see here whether it's been enabled or disabled. So come back here and double check that the campaign you've just set up is enabled. You'll also see the individual statuses of your emails here. So make sure that they're active so that they're going out. A really cool feature that we have up here is our blacklist on negative feedback feature. So basically, if you have this turned on, it will automatically stop sending email campaigns to anyone who's left you negative feedback of three stars or less. So we generally recommend you have that on. It's a really neat little feature. The next thing I wanna show you is over here in the View Stats tab. This one gives you a summary of all the emails that are currently pending, and then also the ones that have already been sent out. To break it down further, come into Pending Emails over here. And now you'll see exactly which emails for which orders are pending and what their current status is. There is a little bit of a delay between an order being created on Amazon and then us being able to send out an email because we do need to wait for that information to come from Amazon. That is why you'll sometimes see this message here, waiting for info from Amazon. The other thing you can do on this page is if you ever, for whatever reason, have a customer that you no longer want to send emails to, you can come to this pending emails page and then search for their order number or their customer name, find that email, and then you have the option of deleting it before it gets sent out. 
The final tab over here is Sent Emails. Click here and then you'll see which emails have already been sent out and to who. So that's how you get your first email campaign set up and those emails being sent out automatically to all your customers. For a while at the start, your PPC campaigns and your promotional giveaways are going to cost you money. They're probably not going to be very profitable, but it's very important that you allow this budget at the start for marketing in order to kickstart your listing. The long-term effects is that you're going to start ranking higher and higher for a lot of the keywords that people are searching for to find your product. Once you start ranking for a lot of different keywords and you start building up your reviews, you're going to start getting a lot more natural sales. By that I mean you won't be spending any money to get those sales. People will just find your listing by typing it in on Amazon. Some people hesitate to run promotional giveaways at the start or PPC campaigns because they lose a bit of money. The result of this is that they get stuck on page 20 or 30 where there's no visibility and they don't get any sales. So it's very important to have this marketing budget to kickstart your listing. So we've covered how to find your product, how to source it, how to send it into Amazon, set up your listing, optimize that listing and get sales. That covers how to launch a product on Amazon. In order to scale your business, you just rinse and repeat that process by launching more and more products. I hope that breaks down the process for you and you're excited to start your own business on Amazon. If you'd like any further information on any of the topics I've talked about today, visit our website at junglescout.com. We've got a heap of content there that goes into even more detail. Thanks for watching today.